I am kind of curious to tell the king that I know about their poison cache. Let's just try it. I know you keep a stash of poison in your innermost chambers and that you plan to use it. Please. That's quite an accusation, girl. And what leads you to believe something like that? I know what you did. I know you use it to rid yourself of your brother. You can stop pretending you don't know what I'm talking about. So, you intend to, what, to threaten me in public? Well, no. if you really want to speak about it, let's speak in private. Oh god. <laughs> well, we're gonna die. I'll tell you everything there. Yes, the truth. I'll even have Bernardo accompany you for safety, if that puts your mind at ease. It doesn't, actually. Claudius is upset, but we'll recover overnight. Hope I don't get myself killed before Sunday. Oh, I, I need to talk to Simona. <laughs> the king has requested your presence in his private chambers. I'm to indicate that this is not a request you can deny. Oh. I wonder what he wants. Perhaps I've said something amiss. Yes. Oh, we did. Hello. Wonderful. You've come. I hear you've recently learned of an insidious rumor. It was good of you to investigate it. I would have preferred you to come to me instead of spreading the lie, but it can't be helped. Ah. Your behavior befits a woman of your standing, and it is appreciated. Now leave us, Bernardo. My lord. I don't think that's wise. Uh. Did I ask you to speak? No. Go. I won't. I can't. Do you want everyone to know the truth about you? Oh boy. So Claudius knows that, huh? I just couldn't help myself from poking the hornet's nest before Sunday. I already know. I know about you, Catherine. I know too that Claudius has been trying to keep you living in fear. Oh, right. Right, right, right. They did tell us about that, actually. I just forgot. But I want you to know that I stand by you, no matter what. And what Claudius tells you, that others would hate you, that's a lie. I promise you. So please, don't abandon me to him. He'll kill me. And you know that now, don't you? I am not certain how you know this. But Claudius, I'll be taking her and leaving now. This is treason. I'm not so certain others would see it that way. The Lord knows what is in your heart, and Ophelia and I both do too. If you act against us, we'll tell the others. Let's go, Ophelia. He was going to kill me, wasn't he? He may still very well try. Please be careful. I'll have my men keep a close watch on your chamber. I don't know how you found out about me, but please, don't tell anyone. For now, that's a part of me I'm not ready to discuss with others. Of course, I understand. You put your life on the line for me. I'll never forget that. Thank you. I did not expect Bernardo to back me up so much. I wonder if that event would have changed at all if I told Bernardo about the poison beforehand? I was thinking during that event, I was thinking Bernardo probably isn't going to suspect things are really all that wrong and would leave me alone thinking that I was overreacting and that there was nothing in particular to worry about. And I was thinking, oh, I'm probably going to have to come back on another loop and tell Bernardo about the poison. And if they find that before this meeting, then I was thinking maybe they'd then believe me. But no, they just they just had my back right away. Have I asked Polonius about the king's cursed book? Father. Uh, do you know where to find it, the strange book? <gasps> how How did you hear about that? 
Never mind, Matt. I'd like to find out where that book went. What do you know? I don't know about any such book, Ophelia. And whatsoever you were told, whenever King Hamlet and I went into town together, I saw nothing of his activities. Wait. Father, into town? What activities can you mean? The king would often ask me to accompany him into town while he spoke to, uh, shall we say, odd acquaintances. But I neither had any direct hand in it, nor overheard a word. So perhaps if I were to visit the town... Ophelia! Don't even think about it, dear heart. A terrible port town filled with thieves and vagrants. It's not for you. But regardless, only the king himself knows what he was searching for in town. So it's lost to time forever, I expect. Better not to dally in it. I realized that another person I can ask about Gertrude searching for something would be Irma. And indeed it is, because remember Irma basically raised Gertrude as their own child. So they've lived through most of Gertrude's life as well as old King Hamlet's. Listen. <sighs> My lady told me of this. She is searching for something private. Something which was taken. Her husband promised her their life would be one of openness, of honesty, of communication. After so many years with Hamlet, it was so terribly cold to her. But Claudius lies to her now in just the same way. Is this the fate of all men with a little power? My lady is a powerful woman in her own right. She has the blood in her to rule empires. Why is she reduced to digging through a man's closet? I can't think of anybody else I could ask about that. I mean, I could just try everybody. It's Simona Day. Simona doesn't like hang out out here, do they? I think they come inside. Hello. Aha. <laughs> Another little conversation. Selling wine. Hmm. Okay. A book. What do you know of a strange cursed book? The book. A cursed book? I'm sorry. My apologies, my dear girl. You must have mistaken me for someone else. I bring quilts. Clothing for babes. I'm merely an old woman who wishes to love God and enjoy the joyful silence of a life well lived. I know nothing of any sort of books. Never had a mind for them. She's acting so peculiarly. Hmm. I think I've mentioned Simona Lives before. And it didn't work, but maybe if I do it now after talking about the cursed book, it'll push him over Simona. the edge. Hmm. No one's ever called me a lady, lass. With the exact image of her age, they said that before. I'm sorry. Lady Simona died a long time ago. Yeah, it's the same thing. Uh this might be new. Let's pick up with the dialogue that I think is new. I found my mother's diary. It spoke of you. I know about your time in the castle. And I think you found something, didn't you? You still have that cursed book within your possession. I would assume you were mad, but I know your mother's face well. You have so much of Elise in you. The book. Do you know the power vested within this book? It's just a blank book. Its pages are not blank for me. Will you have it on you? It contains the many thousands of fragments of worlds I have seen, of futures that never came to pass, of pasts that never were. I know precisely what you mean, and I'm here to put an end to it. I just... I need the book to prevent time from repeating itself. It's... it's useless. 
I am afraid you've been lied to. The one causing your world to repeat isn't the book of fates. It's Peter Quince. No. No! That can't be true. Quince is the one who asked me to find the book. He helped me find you. Why would he do that? That vile man. When I heard rumors that King Hamlet was searching for a particular book, I suspected Quince was behind it. He knows I am weak. Though I will never return the book to him, I may give it to another one of his poor victims. His victims? What are you saying? I've never told this story before. It's the story of my greatest sin. Many years ago, I was fated to die by Queen Astrid's hand. She resented my relationship with her husband. She wanted me dead. One night, while sleeping, I felt someone slit my throat in the darkness. I bled to death there, in my bed. It should have been the end, but it wasn't. Because I woke up, and I was alive once more. Quince found me shortly afterwards. He seemed to know everything about my circumstances immediately. I grew comfortable speaking with him. <sighs> this sounds painfully familiar. And then he proposed a game of sorts. He offered me the book and promised that if I used it, I could change fate like a god. In return, he offered to make time repeat, giving me infinite opportunity. He made just one thing clear. The book was his and his alone. Once I'd gotten my revenge and used it, it would return to his hands. And so I explored every alley, every pathway of my world. He followed me eagerly, curious to observe every choice I made. I could have kept the both of us alive, Astrid and me, but I didn't. I was a woman spurned, and I was out for blood and the crown. Instead, I used the Book of Fates to have her driven mad. I wanted to be queen. You know the story. And Quince helped me bring that world about. I saw how he took such glee in the horrific weeks which followed. My life became a living hell, one I'd created for myself. Ophelia, have you noticed that this world spins ever constantly towards disaster? I'd never known my family and friends to be capable of violence like this. Surely you aren't saying that Quince is the one who makes them act this way? No, their demons are truly theirs. But he has some ability to impose his will upon the world, to influence it. I'm certain you've witnessed it. And he enjoys that power. That disgusted me. I realized I had been used for his pleasure that I'd sold my friends and family for the sake of the power he'd offered me. The morning after Quince freed me from my game with him, I chose a new path. I knew I had to convince him to give me the book once more. In the end, it wasn't hard. He is an artist, and all artists can be played through their vanity. I told him I wanted to learn from the book, to learn to be like him. He indulged me by granting it to me once more. Of course he did. And I ran for my life. I fled and I hid, and the years passed in that silence. And Quince never came for you? He knew I wouldn't grant the book to him. But he well knows I shall give it to you now. What? If what you say is true, why would I ever want it? Because he will never let you leave your repeating world and die in peace. Not until you've used its powers and it has returned to his hand. He made that mistake with me. I hoped that when I died, the book's power would simply die with me. But he knows me well, and he knows I would never allow Elise's daughter to suffer an infinite hell. He knows I loved your mother like my own flesh and blood. Very well then, may this be my final gift to her. If you don't make the book's power your own, the only world available to you will be whichever future Quince makes for you. I... So, if I use this book, 
I can determine the fate of this world? To an extent, people are people. You cannot create a fate which is impossible for broken people to achieve. But there is no turning back. Once you use the Book of Fates, the clock on Elsinore advances forever. I can't. I can hardly believe this is true. Magic books? Godlike powers? What does any of it matter? I just wanted to find a way to save them all, and myself. A perfect world is a notion held only by children and fools. And Ophelia, you are neither. This cursed thing is yours now. May you use it and find peace. It's... Oh. What? That book is over on my table now. How did it get here? Ophelia! Still? No. His death- Go now! I thought... I suppose I thought that might have been the end of all this, but it wasn't. There it is. What's it doing there? What should I do now? There's the hand of Dionysus. Like, what would happen if we just burned it? Obviously, it's a very special book, so I don't know if it'd even be burnable. <laughs> Whoa. Sacrifice. Struggle for relief. This world wishes I had died. That was my original fate. I could accept the way things were meant to be. A simple fate. One where I follow the story to its end. So I can choose which fate I want. Surely some are not complete. If I wanted to just be killed and die, I can do that. This book is so cool, I love this. Prestige for family. This world has not yet come to pass. Hmm. Innocence for power. That might be one where uh, maybe I like kill Hamlet and everybody and somehow come to power or something. Family for legacy. Sacrifice reality for joy. Peace for survival. There's a lot of worlds that haven't come to pass. Sacrifice permanence for passion. Othello promised me the world and I want to take it. Quince warned me our time together is fated to end. Is brilliant bliss worth the sorrow which follows? Hell no. Predictability for adventure. Hmm, I see people, people fighting on a boat or something like that, like pirates. I wonder how I get that one. Maybe I have to leave on the boat with Hamlet. Sacrifice everyone for myself. Fortinbras' arrival shatters my old life into pieces, but I am left alive. I could leave Elsinore behind. Where would I go if I were beholden to no one? Ah, oh, that's right. Yeah, the one where I'm inside of Elsinore, Fortinbra comes, I think kills everybody, but not me. Responsibility for indulgence? Guildenstern and Rosencrantz invited me on an adventure. An endless caper, wherever the path might lead. Life is short and brutal. Why not have fun? That sounds nice to me. <laughs> I'm just not sure who dies in that reality. Independence for peace. Mm. And 
And that looks like that's all of them. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So there's eleven endings. And out of those, I have one, two, three, four, four. I have four out of eleven endings possible. Well, I don't want to revisit any of these. Ah. Oh. I, I was expecting to be accosted by Polonius as usual, but instead it's Quince. This should be an interesting conversation. Lady Ophelia. Quince. Where's my father? Huh. Never mind that. I've put him on pause for the moment. How have you been, my lady? And where have you been wandering? Nowhere, other than my own chambers. Ugh. Let's bear some legs, shall we? I saw you. A familiar little lavender gown trailing its way down to Castletown. And what did you find there, hmm? I was meeting an acquaintance. It was nothing of note. Ah. Nothing of note, she says. Oh, but I don't believe it. You found something incredible, haven't you? I mentioned once to you that I was here to find a lost item, something of mine. And now you've gone and done the deed, all on your own. So very admirable. Liar. I spoke with Simona. I know who you are, who you really are. All of this, everything that's happened to me, it was just a game you were playing to get me to find that stupid book for you. Huh. Correct. And by the way, my thanks. This little adventure of ours has been truly delightful. Now, simply choose a fate and I can leave Elsinore forever. You want me to use the book? Why? I thought you wanted it for yourself. Because if you use the book of fates, it comes right back to me. It's just like a chess game, you see. First your turn, then mine, then yours, then mine, and so on and so forth. Lady Simona merely granted you the human seat at the board. You inherited her match. And let me tell you, in the past she's made some rather atrocious moves. Ugh. So all of this is just spectacle to you. That's right, isn't it? That's what all of this is. It's just a performance you're putting on. In that case... I'll never make a decision. You cannot force my hand. Right now, I choose to stay in Elsinore. <laughs> Wrong! This is your last chance to be reasonable. Give me the book or suffer an eternal hell in a prison I've designed especially for you. Do you think this little game I've put you in is the worst it can be? Oh no, dearest. Uh, uh, uh. It can be far worse still. I alone can understand the details of your pain, for I've seen it all. Huh. This match we're in, Ophelia, you and I, it's like playing with a child. Your strategy lacks efficacy. Your designs are impotent. I will ensnare you every time. Don't you understand? You will linger here, undying, growing bored and stupid and slow. Just like King Hamlet before you. I won't. I've told you I won't give you the book. Leave me. Please. Leave you? I am Elsinore. I am the eye in every wall and my fingers run through every flagstone. I can no more leave you than you can leave me. And my dear, you can never truly leave me. Even when the book is back in my hands, I will always linger. And while you're here, I will dismantle you piece by piece. I will not allow you to find more than the smallest happiness. <laughs> I will smother you until every shred of your flesh is ground beneath my toes. Yes. That's the face I came to see. I hope to be seeing more of it very soon. Till 
This isn't over. This cannot be over. There must be a way to stop him. Acquire the information, banishing the playmaster. Now believe that Quince is dangerous. Banishing the playmaster. That's not a lead. Must be hearsay. He lied to me. He's been lying to me this entire time. He's no friend of mine, and he's not here to help me. He tricked me into fetching this book from Simona for him, and then intended to deceive me into using it so he can have it back. Let's see, is there more detail here as well? Mm, this seems like a similar description to, to what we just saw, but it's a little bit different. He lied to me. He's not on my side at all. He desires nothing more than my total and complete destruction. As some kind of sick game. Some source of entertainment for him. I cannot give him that satisfaction. I must push onward. I have the Book of Fates to guide me. And then in hearsay... Banishing the Playmaster? Is that a hearsay thing that I can talk about? Yes. Quince means to cause us all harm and confusion. He cannot be trusted. What would happen if somebody just killed Quince? Like, would it just be the same? It'd probably be the same thing as if I died. You just go back at the beginning of this loop? I'm certain it wouldn't be that simple. I'd be... No. That wouldn't make any sense. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to try to banish the Playmaster slash uncover more potential endings. <laughs>